Magic 8-Ball, I'm bored. Should I sniff my co-worker's hair? He told me to do it! Mr. Griffin, if a Magic 8-Ball asked you to jump off a building, would you do that too? Did it? No, I'm just using that as an example of- I Listen to the door! <coughs> yeah, mic check, one, two. They see me holding, they hate it. For trolling, they trying to kiss me. Run the nerdy, kiss me, run the nerdy. Kiss me, run the nerdy, kiss me, run the nerdy. Kiss me, run the nerdy. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. You wanna play? I'll play. This is the way. Ready to program! Let's go! Hey everybody, welcome to Rum and Nerdy. I'm Greg. And I'm Garrick. And today we have episode 3.08. The eight ball, magic eight ball. The magic eight ball. You don't want to confuse the magic eight ball with an eight ball. Yeah, this isn't this isn't us playing pool or snooker or any of that stuff. This is us doing the important thing. I guess snooker do, snooker just has colored balls, right? Uh, I think yeah, I think snooker's all just like red, maybe red and yellow. Yeah, or green. Know. And the table is oddly large. It's like the difference between uh, a football field and a soccer field, soccer pitch. Sure, whatever. Sorry, I was watching Ed Lasso recently. I'm an American. What do I know? Actually, if I say it that would we have be a football pitch, would it, be soccer. It, it would be it would be a football pitch. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, huh. so we missed last week, which really sucks. It, it it does, but you know, life. Yeah, we try our best. Yeah, <clears throat> that's so the fir- that's the first episode we missed all year, right? For for twenty three, yeah, that was the first one we missed for twenty three. Well, we should we should drop like two episodes in a week to bank up for it. I was thinking we should do that because we should endeavor to hit fifty two episodes this year. That's a solid ask. Yeah, at at least fifty. You know what? Okay, okay, we'll do fifty. Sure. <clears throat> we need a vacation. Yeah, with the rule, well, it's fifty, but you know, we can <laughs> uh, we can create our own makeup days. So. Sure, sure, that works. Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, do you want to start us off with a pre-fill? Um, yeah, we can. Actually, why don't you pour it? But um, while you're pouring it, I have... It's not really a surprise you know about it, but I'm going to bring this up. You, okay. I'm letting you do your Foley thing, will you? Noise. So, um, I was in Kansas City a couple weeks ago. and Nice. Noise. And... Um, I brought back something very special for you, and you have not asked me about it. I have not. You might have forgotten about it. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I think I forgot about it. I brought you a rack of ribs from Joe's Kitchen. <gasps> That's right. Now I remember. A full rack. I was like, should I do oh. that? The short, the short side, the long side. Those are no, some of the I'll best the... ribs to have ever ribbed. Yeah. So, listeners, so this is legitimately... Every six or seven months, Garrick will call me up in the morning and said, I had the dream again. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you'll I, wake I, up. I straight up had a dream. I uh, n- uh, Nay. I awoke from a dream, chewing on my own pillow, <laughs> dreaming about those ribs. Oh, they're so good. Well, um, the question was going to be, because it's a full rack of ribs, do you take it home and make it for your family? Or do we do my three, this on an episode? My three-year-old daughter doesn't eat ribs, so. And Kelly's not a big rib. Per- no, I take it back. She's a big rib person. I would like her to sample these ribs. I thought about that in my mind. I'm like, she wouldn't. Oh no, no, she actually really likes. Ribs. Yeah, no, I think. Hmm. So is this like a again? Is this a we should do? I part of me wants to have these do rum and foodie. Hmm. Well, you did buy a full rack. And then, like, take her so we can, like, two or three ribs. Yeah, 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 yeah it's, here, we, we, lo- we left you the end. Yeah. yeah. No. I, I think I, I think we can easily do. Or, hear me out on this one, she can come over and we can, like, eat ribs and then her and Sandy can hang out and yeah, we can do this. There you go. We're going to the back and be weird. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that we have our pork sticks. 
What are we pre-filling with here, Greg? Bamboo. The old staple. And you cleared out the bottle on yes. that pour. There, there was not, there was not a lot yeah. in there. And actually, this is going to be my first sip out of this new glass. Oh y- yes, you please. So describe I describe the new glasses to everybody. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, his birthday, I was out of town, came back. Well, I was having that. It was actually last. Was it last? Yeah, it was was it last Friday? Yeah, it was last Friday. I'm sitting there talking to the team. And uh, just about some stuff. And Mm -hmm. um, they're like, okay, so if we're done talking about that, we wanted to give you this. And they hand me a box. And actually, and I saved the paper. So I can fully too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job. Is that that tape? What do we we got here? They drew balloons and actually did a really good art project. Oh, wow. That's cute. Yeah. That's. That's actually really cute. Like that's like the kind of thing that you'd paint on the wall of a child's bedroom. Yeah, these balloons and that's it's adorable. Just... So, in that were two white boxes, and each box was a glass, and in each glass was a little bag with whiskey stones. Oh, cool! The fun part about this is I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, that's a cool glass, and I didn't notice at first. And they're like, well, pretend you're drinking in it, and you go, what? As I'm going to do my yeah. first sip. See, even I fully did it. Oh, God, it's so good. Yeah, it's delicious. When you drink, in the bottom, they had the bottom of the glasses etched, world's rummiest boss. <laughs> uh, that's a, that's how you that's how you uh, show your authority at work. Yeah, <laughs> walking around with my glass of rum. Well, we are in the process of remodeling and moving into our, like, my team's new facility. Yeah. Which will be great. Yeah. Um, because your facility was out of space. <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah. We're, by, by a lot. Yeah, there's so much going on. Why does Greg work from home? Because there's no place for him to go. Right. So, um, but we're working on fixing that. But this was great because I unplugged them and I'm not, like, I was just like, oh, oh, you'd like hit me in the feels. Yeah. And then they're like, but there's more. If you act now. Yeah, like Don Pardo comes out on a microphone from. That's right, Greg. You won. Yeah. And, and that's me, not all. <laughs> let me tell you what you just won. So um, I'll go to the this other, you know, they, they got me several books. Anybody knows me, I enjoy a good book. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, in fact, not just fictional books. I enjoy reference books. I enjoy books of, and you're making, like, you didn't know that about me? I enjoy reference books. Just as soon as you said that, I'm like, I have some old, like, College chemistry books that I'll just no, hand it over to you. And... Not not necessarily like that, but like like surfaces. I've got like the history or the, the history of furniture. I've got architectural books for references of Gothic architecture. Surfaces. You've never heard of the book Surfaces? No. Really. I'm not as well read as you. I need to get a coffee table book about coffee tables. As Greg takes off his microphone and he leans back and pulls off of his newly remodeled bookshelf. Surfaces. Oh, it has a dust jacket on it. That's so retro. So anybody that works in a visual artistic industry hmm. needs to own that book. Okay, well, it does come with a CD-ROM. Yeah. Well, it because two CD-ROMs. Yeah, because it's the CD-ROM or all of those images. Are you shitting me? No. I, oh. I do actually need this book because... Yeah, I'm this tough. is this is half of the crap that I try to find, like just on the interwebs when I'm making our logos, right? and now it's like, oh no, here's all the here's all the texture files you need. Yeah, and it's like, Son oh, of a, what the? You know what I want this to look like? I want this to look like Flemish Bond brick layout, but aged a hundred years, and you'll find a picture of that in there. More importantly, I'll have the CD ROM. Actually, what quality are the images on the CD ROM? They're full quality. What does full quality mean? The CD ROM is from. 1996. I don't know if this quality is as full as you're remembering it. Well, that's all that's on it are those. But the, you know, like, you know, old wood grain, uh, different colors of wood, different kinds of marble, any of that kind of stuff. Oh, man. I really could have used the shit out of this book. Yeah. That is an huh. amazing book for people who do what we do. Yeah, damn it. So I, it, that's the point. Anyway, I love those kind of books. I've got that. This is a solid book. Okay. Well, it's good that the book about surfaces is solid. Okay. Yeah, the one that's I, I, I laying 
The one that's laying flat on the other side. I retract. Is, I retract previous snark. That's a that's an awesome book. Yeah, that other one is from the Marble Institute, and the entire book is different kinds of marble, did different get, colors. Did you get that from Concrete Con? I did. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> is it autographed by the author? No, no, no. But anyway, I like a good book. I like I like visual references to things. I like visual history. So you like th- picture books? Shut up. <laughs> Fucking dick. Anyway. <laughs> Re- reading hard, yeah. Greg Greg likes the pictures. Okay, it's, it, you know what? It's like the comic book of the reference world of the you know of the educational reference world. It, it's like a comic book for that stuff. Look at pictures of things. There's gonna be a test on it. Later. You know, you're totally making fun of me, but the second you open that book, you're like, "Holy shit, I need this!" Book. Oh yeah, surfaces was great. I yeah, yeah that was I, okay. So continue. Okay, continue. So your, te- what, your you team, know, your birthday, and hold on. I do want to oh. say one more thing about my marble book Damn that you want to make fun of. Yeah, Okay. There's actually a cheat sheet in there because every marble has a code. So if you find a marble you like, it will actually tell you the quarry in the world that you can find that particular yeah, marble. You have to reference it. You see, I bet you there's an app for that now Shut where up. if you were to download the app, of course, you probably have to pay for it. I from will Congress edit Con. you out of this fucking episode. <laughs> Welcome to Roman Nerdy. I'm Greg, and that's it. <laughs> Garrick, Garrick, Garrick's using, you know what? Garrick's using AI to develop his marble identification app. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, so I've got this long, it's I'll not have, in my back. And I'll laughing have, just hurt me. I'll have you know, several people will download my marble identification app and I will make quite literally dollars. I will. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to the story. <laughs> We're a bunch of fucking idiots. The fuck anyway, are we talking about uh, the, the the team. So they got uh, me these two books. Your birthday at work. Yeah, okay. actually, they got me two books in a Mad Lib, which <laughs> in and of itself is pretty badass. Um, Mad Lib. That's like every conversation. Yeah, for us it is. Uh, and so I pull this first book out, this rather large, and I look at it. and I'm like, right off the top, it says Dungeons and Dragons, and I'm nice. thinking, holy shit, they know that I was been talking about trying to find my way back into a campaign or do something yeah. like I ever have time for any more shit to do but like oh yeah I gotta figure that out and I'm thinking they got me the new Nudgeon Master's Guide or something because I've got all first edition books mm-hmm. and they're on like Cause, 77th cause, edition because you're old yeah. yeah shut up and so I look at it and I'm like okay well which book is it maybe it's like you know the monster manual or the fiend folio or any of those and it's no it's Heroes Feast the official Dungeons and Dragons cookbook Ooh. Yeah, so it's a badass because anybody that knows me, yeah. I'm a nerd and I like to cook. Elven bread, you know, it's like, okay, uh, dragon salmon. Can't wait to find out what that is. Um, yes, we should make some of that nasty elf bread. Under dark lotus with fire lichen spread. I don't know I, you know, that sounds gully like dwarf home style porridge. Corned beef and cabbage, which I actually want to make. Black pudding, ooh. Looks like chocolate pudding, and it's in chapters. This halfling cuisine, you know, which, in by the way, you, you got to know. Yeah, they're the ones that are going to get it all right. Melted cheese with chunky tomato broth. Ooh. Oh. Halfling oatmeal sweet nibbles. Looks like oatmeal cookies. Could have been two words. <laughs> they used five. Um, I think that's. I think that's this book's shtick. Everything soup. Hey, how do we class up these oatmeal cookies? Aha. Honey Elvin's ham. sweet nibbles. Right? There you go. Honey ham with pineapple gravy. It sounds gross, but then you look at it and you're like, actually, that looks pretty freaking delicious. Pineapple gravy on ham? That sounds, but yeah, that sounds great. Well, just honey gravy in itself. We'd be like, is that like sausage gravy only with pineapple? And then you're like, gag a little. No, nothing you said sounded gag worthy. Right? Anyway. So I think this is the monster section. Hold on. Based on that. Yeah, this is Uncommon Cuisine. Arkin, the because Cruel Flames Roasted Halfling Chili. Ingredient, Arkin half of a halfling. Cruel Flame Elven Chili. Orc, and, orc bacon. Orc bacon? Yeah. Do you have to slaughter an orc? I don't know if I can go to Whole Foods and get orc bacon. <laughs> no, it just says bacon, brown sugar, black pepper, garlic powder. What's orc about that? I don't know. Why is it orcish? It's because that's the way orcs eat it. Really? Shut up. Really? Orcs put just a dash of pepper on their pork products? (laughs) 
Fire spice I don't, I don't, abysmal even, chicken kebabs. I don't even think orcs cook their food. This let is alone, probably let alone have the time to. Well, that doesn't mean they don't salt it and age it. Dil- diligently carve up a pig. <laughs> Twice baked cockatrice wings. Meats back uh, on the menu, boys. Braised lamb. Good, good nice reference. Oh. I thought you'd appreciate that. Yeah, surrogate steak. I don't know what that is. I'll have to look at this, but is that where you eat somebody else's steak? <laughs> <laughs> Did you break something? Yeah, my back is really hurting, and laughing hurts right now. <laughs> it's like I bro- you, like you you went into a laugh, and then I, it looked like you were shot. It looks like someone shot you. I feel like somebody shot me right in the middle of my my back is not really good right now. Anyway, just I can't laugh. Nothing more funny can happen on this episode. Well, if it's one thing that I'm known for, it's being unfunny. Yeah. Okay, so the other book, moving on, trying to forget this, catch my breath, um, is the Dungeon Meister, a drag or a drink master's guide, and it's uh, 75 recipes for different cocktails. And I'd already picked out one that I'm intending on making. I'd, I'd hope to have the ingredients, but there's actually two I do not have. I thought there was so, yeah, it was it, it it felt more complicated than we were prepared to do on a whim. Yeah. But the funny thing is some of the things in it I actually have that were weird. You know, melon liqueur and blackberry brandy. Those aren't that weird. When they start asking for things like rose water and mint no, extract, like that's that. the kind of shit where you're like, eh. Yeah. None of that stuff. Barbarian range, that's what it's called. Uh, so it's Spiced rum, amaretto, tequila, vodka, gin, blue, caraco, uh, light rum, blackberry, brandy, melon liqueur, coconut rum, which I don't have, and one can, eight ounce can of an energy drink of your choice. I have some coconut-ish rum. Um, I have one of uh, one of the monkey rums mm. from St. Lamprey is coconut. It's not like Malibu, but it's, it's coconut-ish. Gotcha. Coconut adjacent. We should just coordinate so in the next episode we'll try and make a drink out of here. Sweet. That means we have to plan more than 15 minutes ahead of time. Yeah. That'll be fun. Speaking of planning. Oh, and yeah, and then they got me the Mad Lib and we might, I don't know, we should play around with that at some point, but not right now. But I do want to say, like I talked to you about something midweek. Remember what that was? Mm-hmm. I called you randomly in the morning and said, idea. Oh, I I vague I remember that happening. You don't remember what it was, dude. It's been a shit week for me. Yeah, it me has too. Been a shit week for me. But every once in a while, brilliance pops into my mind, and I feel like this is one I want to create. Rum History Month. Oh, that's right. I do remember that. That that was that was a legitimate good idea. Yeah. So we need to pick a month. Yeah. What's a good month? I don't know. March is coming up <laughs> now. March is now now. I know. We need to pick not March. Listen, and I think we need to not pick April because it's a big travel month. Maybe big travel month. And we had talked about like writing some copy and maybe doing a special rum month yeah. intro. All month long, we're celebrating rum month. So I think... For both episodes. I think summertime is a good time to do this. Because rum is a summery drink. June or July. Okay. Anyway, we're going to create a thing. July. We should have some... So time to uh, loop in um, Florida Rum Society, see if we can get them involved. Hey, by the way, Florida <coughs> Rum Society, we're creating Rum Month. Yeah. We request you, we diligently request you support us in this. Yes. Please and thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, let's see. Rums originated in the West Indies and are first mentioned in records from Barbados in about 1650. But there's no month attached to that. Yeah. It was during the summer. It was during the summer. I remember it clearly. Yes. It was like yesterday to me. As you said earlier, I'm old. <laughs> Not that old. Yeah. So here's a question for you. Shoot. Here we are, you know, significantly, not well, but significantly into season three of our show. Mm-hmm. And we have always done these breaks. With this idea that if we ever need to actually add in commercials, we have a place to create breaks. Yeah. And realistically, we know that one day we might actually get in trouble for having that music in there. Do we? Should we even give a shit about that anymore? No. 
Should we just completely forgo that? Unless we're like talking about music or talking yeah. about things. Uh-huh. I'm on board. Okay. Because we can always just say, hey, we're going to take a quick pause and then immediately just keep talking. Just Yeah, just, hey, we're going to take a quick pause and then... Hey, we're back. <laughs> just, just like 15 seconds of fart sounds and yeah. then... <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Let's pre-fully some pouring and chugging <laughs> and just have it on a quick play button. There you go. Okay, so no more breaks. We're done with that. Okay, screw the breaks. We we care more about the pre-credit and the post-credit. Th- that's where the fun is. Yeah. And by fun, I mean we frantically try to find creative sound bits that incorporate the number of the day. Well, that's this season's oh, bit, but, yeah, yeah. you know, which I think it's funny. Although season one, naming it after the Friends naming convention, that was great. That was that was great. Here, here's one for you. Um, so, have you did you see in the news that the remains of four dead presidents are being launched into space? <laughs> no, no, I missed that. Okay, so apparently, the remains of four dead presidents are being launched into space. Like part of the remains, or all of them? So that that is a critical question because uh, my whole take on it was, or you know, my big my whole big takeaway from this space launch president remain fiasco is um, uh, apparently we have full access to the corpses of dead presidents. So if you want a chunk of Dwight Eisenhower, not a problem, fill out this form. Here's your chunk of Eisenhower. Apparently you can do that. Um, <clears throat> is it weird that I kind of want to just keep requesting Dwight Eisenhower until they run out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we're all, we're all out of Eisenhower. Yeah. Be- best we just I send can, a be- response, Greg. We be- already gave you five pieces. Yeah, be- <laughs> be- best I can do is a Gerald Ford. <laughs> uh, yeah, so apparently, I think... Um, do you have anything in a Nike? Do you have anything in a Nike? Yeah, no. So apparently, it's it's George Washington, Eisenhower, Ronald Reagan, and uh, Kennedy. Kennedy makes sense. Why? Because he was already disassembled? No, because he like was the one pushing the space program. Yeah, but it's still it. It's isn't there a statute of limitations on when someone dies to when you can send them in, into orbit? Clearly not. Like, okay, so I think um, James Doohan, Scotty, mm-hmm. uh, Nichelle Nichols. I think both of them are either all of which or partially in orbit or in the moon or something. Like, I know that they have remains that have made it into space. But they died fairly recently. Cremated. Sent into space. That seems like, that seems like, hey, we are <laughs> uh, we are honoring your legacy with a trip to space for, for you, and, you and or part of your remains. I get what you're saying. George Washington is like, hey, check out these bones. We're going to fucking put them on a rocket ship and just... Totally get what I'm... I'm just saying, like, if they want to do it, whatever. I think it's weird. Like, yeah, we dug them up, and we're gonna, now we're selling the parts. Like, well, it's yeah, yeah. Dumb. But I mean, but I mean, where where do you draw? The, well, these are historically significant figures. Well, that's fucking great. What are you gonna do? Like Christopher Columbus, like the Queen of England. Like we're just gonna take random famous people and shoot chunks of them up in outer space, right? This feel it feels like a wasted payload opportunity. There's got to be some high school science class that would kill. <laughs> To have, you know, one of their anti-egg cracking little contraptions or something, <laughs> something sent into outer space. We, why do we, why are we sending chunks of dead human up there? That's funny. And I'm not supposed to be laughing anymore. Um, That's a legit question. No, I, I'm not, I'm not against your argument here. I'm just, it's funny to me. We've, I mean, again, we I reached- get it, Kennedy... Like he was significant to the space program, great. Reagan, uh, like space made, la- like because he made Star Wars a yeah. real thing. Okay, yeah. Eisenhower, um, he knew what a rocket was. <laughs> he adv- he advocated for importing Nazis. Like I don't. Okay, uh, Washington. He's on the one dollar bill. I don't know. Clear, yeah. Okay. There you go. I don't know. He was a solid dude. I don't know. I, mm. Yeah. Maybe they just have a surplus of Washington 
a and, surplus of Washington. And they're like, they're like, well, if you're gonna if you're gonna send something up there, you send something we got a lot of. He was tall. I have a surplus of Washington. <laughs> who I mean, who do who do you think? Okay, if 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 you had chunks of former presidents at a flea market, let's say, which bin do you think is going to be the most full? If you're gonna, if you, uh, Coolidge, <laughs> Garfield, I don't know. There's all of those ones that nobody remembers the name of. There, a lot of stuff happened in between Washington and Lincoln, and an embarrassing amount of Americans can't name anybody. Yeah, between Washington and Lincoln. Yeah, I see the look in your eyes as you're you're computing frantically trying to come up with a president between Washington and Lincoln. No, there's like. All, there was a bunch of them. All those founding fathers, they took a bunch of them took turns. Who was that guy that was only president for like two months because his inauguration speech was so long that he ended up catching pneumonia and died? That's hilarious. I don't know. Huh. I did mention I like reference books, but I like this is, I don't know where to go with this conversation. I was not prepared. I don't know. You weren't. You weren't. You weren't prepared to talk about the the corpse uh, space program. I've got IMDb up, and I just don't know that that information's on IMDb. Shortest presidential term. I don't know. I'll look it up. Okay, he's in here. Yeah, not Harding, not Cleveland, McKinley. Ooh, feels like it could have been McKinley. I don't know. Now we need it. There's a whole other bit. Random presidential facts. <laughs> Did you know that Wash part of Washington's femur is circling Alpha Centauri? Did you know Chester A. Arthur was lactose intolerant? <laughs> uh, well, speaking of um, IMDb mentioned a minute ago. Yeah, you mentioned it. What I have up on IMDb. I, we need to talk about something. Okay, let's talk about something. Mandalorian. Season three premiere. Yeah, it started, and I totally didn't realize it started. You you haven't watched it yet? No, I watched it. I'm I'm just saying I was sitting on my couch, and I'm like, man, the internet is just talking all this stuff about The Mandalorian. Like, that seems odd. Oh, hey, season three launched today. I get it. Yeah. So, I mean, it was for for an e- first episode, it was incredibly short. It was only like 35 minutes. So... At least there's that. Got a chance to catch up on it. <clears throat> Interesting. Um, so I've seen a couple things. One, uh, it was I think it was Dave Filoni was quoted as saying that the passage of time between the beginning of Mandalorian and current Mandalorian is actually a couple years. Yeah, it was like it was like two years. And when they when they go back to was it Navarro? Yeah, you and can it's see, all like, you can see the changes and like oh shit. This yeah, it was is... a dusty western town and now it's like Naboo. Not literally, but it, it's a very nice architecturally. It's cleaned up. The old saloons down to school, whatever. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was good. Yeah, but that wasn't the most interesting thing. You know, by the way, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. We did it. Okay, so the um, what to you? What was the most Holy shit moment of that episode. I wouldn't call it a holy shit moment, but it was it was a callback. It was a it was a callback to a an entity from Rebels that was like the Purgle. oh, Purgles. Fuck yeah. The uh Purgles. The, yeah, the the hyper uh, uh hyperspace uh yeah, they're like Whales. whale, whatever. Yeah. yeah, but they're called purgles. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. When when, when you you saw the shadows early, mm-hmm. pretty early on in the episode, Grogu's just kind of looking at them, and you're like, "Oh fuck yeah!" Yeah, because Grogu doesn't know what they are. They're drawn to force sensitive, sensitive people or beings. Mm-hmm. So what could that be foreshadowing? Uh, the tie-in, the tie-in to freaking rebels, man. Yeah. The Ezra, arguably the Thrawn, all that stuff. Ar- Kanan. Yeah. Arguably one of the most uh, suspenseful cliffhanger ending to an episode or to a to a, a, ser- a, series. a series. A series, yeah. Yeah. In in Star Wars canon. I would agree. Yeah. I would I would agree. 
So uh, for those that don't know, in you know, and and you know, there's I know plenty of like, oh, I'm a Star Wars fan, a huge fan, a biggest but fan I don't ever. Watch the cartoons, yeah, because they're the cartoons are just dumb. And no, we're making fun of you, Todd. Yeah, and I think Brian and a few other people. They're, they're, Wait, Brian? Yeah, I think Brian. Star Wars tattoo guy? Yeah. I has never seen the cartoons. I don't think he has. So, you know, and, and the that's... That, what, the fact that you can commit to ink and not something animated, that is... Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I think. I might be wrong, but I, I think... I, I kind of remember at one point just trying to say, dude, you don't understand how cool Rebels is and how much better... The original trilogy, or, or episode one, two, and three, is because of that show. But again, you know this conclusion of Rebels that. Uh, sorry, I was saying. Did I say Rebels? I meant Clone Wars. Clone, Clone Wars, Wars. Clone, Clone Wars, Wars makes yeah, the end yeah. there, but Rebels, uh, where that ends. You know, it's basically this this uh, young Jedi that had been gone through training. Mm-hmm. Um, really at the end of this series comes into his power and just finally gets to this zero fucks given moment and hurdles himself through the health of uh, help of these purgles hurdles him and and grand admiral thrawn into space somewhere completely now there's been a lot of speculation because osoko is attached to that part of the story osoka Ahsoka, sorry. Um, Ahsoka, what the fuck? I'm, uh, honestly, I'm seriously focusing on this, not my back that hurts real bad right that, now. So. Uh, that's totally fine. Okay, so she is really tied in to what's going to go on, and there's been a lot of speculation for a while that if they're bringing her back for a show, that that's the story they're going to tell. Yeah, because I, I believe the way Rebels ended was her, was it her going off to search for... Yeah. Ezra and and was Kanan with her? No, didn't Kanan die? Didn't he? I thought in that last season, Kan Kanan like gave, gave his life for a thing, and yeah, I don't I don't remember. I, I truthfully, I gotta, I gotta have to go back and watch it. It's been such a long time. I feel like he did one of those. I'm going to hold off this blast with all of my force power while you escape, and then he was consumed by it. Yeah, they could bring him back if they wanted to. Yeah, he it was, was a space saved inside opera. of a thing, and there was a blah blah blah. Yeah. And, and by the way, it was William Henry Harrison died of pneumonia thirty-two days after his inauguration. Nice callback. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn long speeches. He ought to knew better. Anyway, so I thought that was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There's, um, you know, the final scene. You know, he, he you know, he w- walks in and sees Bo-Katan, and. She's like, boom, boom, yeah, no, boom, 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 all of my, all of my, my team, they all left. They're following somebody else and they took this stolen fleet and they're going to go off and they're following somebody. Why don't you go lead? Because she's still pissed. She doesn't have the dark saber. Yeah. That's yeah. a Mandalorian bullshit. Mm, pissing contest. Uh, the whole thing that he's got to go back and find this closed mine and take a bath, like, so that he can be redeemed is dumb anyway. But it, it, it really is. I was, I was never much on Creed's. <laughs> what was that Seinfeld? Yeah, I think so. Wait, you don't deliver mail in the rain? No. Wait, 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 wait is it no rain nor sleet nor so? Hey, it's the first one. That was never much on Creed's. Yeah. Uh, well, that whole thing where like, oh, this is the way, and you don't take it. I was like, come on, give it up. Yeah, but there was, was the the difference between actual Mandalorians and the Night's Watch. Yeah. Well, the cult, Mandalorian cult. Mandalorians are kind of cultish in general, but yeah, um, totally dig the the space battle. You know where he's flying around. That was a great action scene. Mm-hmm. Um, really, really good shots. You know, f- you know the, him fighting those seven enemy fighters, whatever, in an asteroid field was fucking fantastic. And it, you know, I, the character, the main pirate boss, I don't recognize him from previous stories. I don't either, um, and I felt like I should. I was, you know who I'm waiting for them to bring back? Hondo. Yeah. Do you know where he appears live action and they do a really good job of him live action? Book of Boba Fett. Nope. He's not Book of Boba Fett. Hondo? Who was the bounty hunter that fought, that they, they hired to come in? 
No, no. Am I thinking? Uh, Hondo's the pirate. He's the pirate. Guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the, I'm thinking um, the guy with the brim hat. The blue guy with the... Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, no. He was from the cartoons. That was uh, Cad Bane. Yeah, Cad Bane. Hondo, Hondo um, yeah. is... Didn't they live action him something to do with Galaxy's Edge? Yes. Yeah. Because he... Uh, he ha- Well, so he, there's the animatronic of him in the uh in the in the uh, the pre-show mm-hmm. you know before you before you get on smuggler's run but they have presumably a guy in in full costume doing the thing and i and similar to cad bane i i part of me really hopes it's the voice actor um but yeah, they have him sitting at the controls of, of the millennium falcon doing your you know please buckle your safety belt blah, 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 blah. yeah but they do such a good job in that that short video. Oh, they need to bring him into one of those shows. And That'd he, be cool. And he appears in Clone Wars and Rebels, and like he works his way into all of those animated things. Yeah, I think they could pull him off in uh, live action status. Yeah, that could be badass. I think this season of Mandalorian is is going to have a lot of. Um, cameos and some pop-ups and some oh shit moments i'm looking forward to it i hope so i hope so there's so much i really enjoy something that always bothered me about the star wars universe is they never never do callbacks ever like it's like oh no no there's a creature oh we're just gonna invent a new creature don't you want to call back one of your classic creatures no no new creature new thing it's like they're adverse to yeah bringing back something you've already seen but Filoni's been doing it. Yeah. And even in Mandalorian, you know, the season three, episode one, there was a handful of things where you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Jabba's, yeah. Jabba's guy, Salacious B. Crumb, the little crow-looking dude. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. A whole, there's a whole tree of them. Oh, is there? Yeah, in the Mandalorian, when he's when he's walking through the town square, there's like a whole, there, there were like a whole, there's a whole tree with them just hanging out in the tree. I love the what's it, IG eleven or whatever the IG eighty eight. Yeah. yeah. So they they're fixing him, and they went to fix him with those same little creatures that they had in um, the the last um, one, the last uh, episode nine. Yeah, yeah. Or eight. Yeah, because they're little tech geniuses or whatever. Yeah, and IG eighty eight. Uh, that's another great example of a robotic bounty hunter who they 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 had in the cartoons well enough, but uh, yeah, he w- he was just. A background statue from Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, and they, the Emperor is offering a substantial reward. Yeah. Burp, 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 burp. So there's some good stuff in there. In fact, I noticed the because I was at, at Galaxy's Edge on Sunday for work of all things, but mm-hmm. um, I was looking at the um, we were it, like just Dan and I uh, when we got done we went over to the cantina. Yeah, and we were at the bar. It was the first time I stood at the bar. Oh, at Olga's. Yeah, and but great. There were three random things up on the the top of the bar. Is just set dressing that looked loosely like they were the the metal shell for the IG eighty eight head. They are. They're the. They're, it's like the, it's like the the tap. I know they use them for like the tap. Yeah. Handle thing as part of the bar back. Yep. Gack. Yeah. No, that's absolutely what that is. There's Fantastic. a hand. There's a handful of deep cut Star Wars references in Olga's. Oh yeah, yeah. It's Actually, really all cool. of Galaxy's Edge, but specifically in Olga's. If you're standing there, there's yeah. There's some shit. There's some good good stuff for the the um, fans. We got a charcuterie board thing to snack on. It had this like kind of honeycomb um, whipped thing that was like I don't know. It was really weird, but it was good. Uh-huh. And I like the way that on the display it looked like like random alien organs and oh yeah yeah they did I, a good job on it. I had the uh, the Rancor tooth beer flight. That's a fun if you're if yeah. you're into if you're into tiki mugs and collector glasses. That's fun because you get like the whole board and then they have the the glasses. They sit in the it's almost like a shot ski kind of thing. Yeah, but the glasses sit in it and they're Rancor teeth. And you can keep them. Yeah. Well, I mean, because I got it, the Yub Nub. It's like every tiki thing you got to buy it. But yeah, you know. I got the Yub Nub, mm-hmm. which I didn't even realize. I was just looking at the 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 ingredients. I'm like, yeah, hell, that one. That's a good brown drink. I'll get the Yub Nub, and then it's like, cool. From 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 Endor. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
but it's a, it, it's served in a tiki mug that yeah it's like an Ewok tiki mug thing. Uh-huh. And I was looking at it, it's like that's a forty five dollar drink. Uh huh. Because of that, and it's like yeah. so, but it's twenty five dollars less if you don't get the it, the Rancor flight is like seventy bucks or something. It's worth it because tiki mugs are awesome but you know i'm still avoiding it i'm you know i keep saying i'm not gonna get them and i'm, I'm like still look, avoding it and yet I'm looking at four all of this other shit you have a whole shelf of fucking mugs in the well i the only one in here that i bought myself out of all these uh the only one that i bought myself was the one from three dots because the, the Grogu one, Sandy got me. The other one is from um, Alcorn. Alcorn, yeah. And then this one. The uh, the uh, Game of Thrones ice. Yeah, that's the. Guy. Yeah, thing, whatever. Night King, whatever. Yeah. Um, he. Um, Nightshade. I think you were closer to Night King, but I anyway, know. somebody I, I forgot where I got that one. Nightshade by Paco Rodan. Yeah. Somebody got that for like Christmas or something to me. Cool. Anyway. Speaking of interesting old glasses, I do want to point out, so we are busting out these little silver goblet shot glasses. Yeah, where's my, oh, yeah, here it is. So these are nice. These are family heirlooms. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Wow, that, that sounds really good. Yeah, these are real silver plated from Spain. These, yeah. I used to have like full size ones and everything else. It, it looks like the kind of thing that's either, no, these are hundreds of years old and they're passed down, gen, passed down generation to generation, or... There was a table of these at Comic Con, and they were giving them away with the purchase of your marble identification manual. No, if you read the underside of them, these these were fun. made in. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember. It says on there, very small writing, but they're made in Spain. They're like in Roma S L. Yeah, shard something. Can't read it. Made in Spain. Yeah, hey, look at that. Yeah. Is it silver? They look silver. I think they're silver plated. It looks silver, but it doesn't have, you know, like the, the sterling silver yeah. stamp. You know, real silver has that stamp shit in it where you... Yeah, So, you, but since it's, this is only plated, they don't stamp it. Oh, well, that's... So it's <clears throat> just silver enough to tarnish, but not so silver that it's worth money. Correct. Oh, right in the sweet spot. Yeah, which is why, you know, we didn't save any of the other stuff, which is kind of regrettable. But these are nice, and I thought that they'd be, like, nice little things for us to do things like sip, sip uh, ah. limoncello. Well, what are we drinking today, Greg? Limoncello. Okay. What's so, the backstory behind this? So, um, And I swear to God, I thought this said Pantene when I first looked at it. Oh, no, the, no, no, the, not what? Pantene. It is uh, Polini. Lemoncello. So um, is it Polini or do, do, does Italy do the stupid double L thing like they do in Spanish? Uh, I don't know. I think it's Polini. This particular one, I think it's Polini. Payini? Payini? I don't know. So Roma. Here's, here's the story behind this. So um, this was a gift from her neighbors. They went out of town to go to Italy on a very long vacation a few months ago. And um, we took an eye, you know, kept an eye on their house and, and things like that and the pets and still so there. So yep. Yeah. This was over, over New York. Um, over New York or New Year's Eve. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I was saying that, but, um, the period of time known as New York. <laughs> yes. Shut up. <laughs> uh, Greg's using a very specific calendar. <laughs> anyway. Um, I had not, I've never been to, to Italy, but I had been to St. Paul de Vans and, and which is um, outside of Monaco and Nice. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a restaurant there where you can get limoncello by the bottle. And then they have another one that's made out of lavender. It's like a lavender cello. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a big fragrance area right there, kind of all in that Mediterranean yeah. zone. So where it's all, it's all uh, highly fancy and, the of good smelling yeah exactly and these bottles are pretty pretty substantial in size and there were four of us that drank four bottles total <laughs> of this in an afternoon one of us had to be bet, put to bed for the day at like three forty-five. i believe i know which one that was yeah not mentioning names but so um i was telling the story and and so they thought it was so enjoyable that they would bring me back a bottle they also brought me back some very fine apparently very very high-end Italian olive oil, a small thing of it, which I have not used yet. So that's what this is. Um, 
Pellini Limoncello is a natural liqueur that has been crafted by the Pellini family in Italy since 1875. It is made from prized uh, sufusato lemons exclusively uh, exclusive to the Amalfi Coast. The hand-picked lemons are infused immediately, so their freshness and flavor delivered in every bottle. Pellini versatility is almost endless. Enjoy it neat on the rocks, straight from the fridge, or mixed into a cocktail and food for recipes. For a crisp and authentic taste of Italy, none can compare. Thick and authentic taste of Italy. Yeah. Not tomato-based. So we are looking at um, Drizzly. That's where this is. Uh, uh, Out of all the reviews, it's got a 4.7. A solid, solid review there. uh, Or a rating. It's... um, uh, pretty good, and, and you you look through it's it. Four point seven out of nineteen. Four point seven out of five. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, usually, when you're talking about stars, that's what it is. But I guess I didn't say stars anyway. You didn't say stars, and I'm like, out of ten, like yeah, that's yeah, kind of yeah. shitty. Like, wow. Anyway, I'm not even betting five hundred. Anyway, still not opened. Oh, okay. I'm trying to say. Okay, that's the little foil pull string. Which didn't totally come off. Yeah. Noise. Do I have your, do I have your glass? You don't. I need that. Yeah, clearly. Before two pouring. Episode's going to be over. Glug, 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 glug. Wow, that was... This just smells fucking amazing. It does. Ugh. It smells like a cleaner. Wow, it it really does. Okay. Abu hai. Ooh. Actually, not, I, that's really good. I'm not going to lie. It 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 smells so overly lemonly delicious. It's like lemon pledge. Yeah. It smells like those it's lemon like, drops. Fuck you lemon. Yeah. Although compared to other limoncello I've had, it's not as sweet. So this is nice and mild, very smooth. You're not getting a lot of alcohol taste. No, no, not at all. It's not sweet, but it's kind of syrupy. Like it's a, it, it's 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 thick mm-hmm. for liqueur, oh. or or on par with liqueur thickness. But I'm I'm starting to get that alcohol now, like after several seconds. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's only twenty six percent. It's not. And it's not a lot of content. No, but it's it's delicious though. This yeah. is this is a full bodied lemon experience. <laughs> yeah. And when you're out, you can drink pine saw. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Yeah, don't. Not a not at all. But yeah, lemon pledge. No, it 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 it's delicious. It's delicious. It smells good. I don't know what I'd do with it. It's a, I, I mean, would, it's, I'm actually I'm going to throw it in the fridge and chill it. It'd be better a little cold. Yeah, but I mean, what do you usually do? You just drink it. Yeah, sipper out of these little fancy cups. Yeah, it's great as a little yeah. dessert. Pinkies out. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you get a little shot glass, and I suppose you could drink it as shots. But the only time I've ever had I it wouldn't shoot this at all. No. Um, the the only time I've ever had this has either been at Epcot when we're drinking around the world during food and wine mm-hmm. or cause they do have it in Italy there. Yeah. Or I would, um, have it as a sipper after a really heavy meal, like a good pasta, rich pasta meal. Like you know, a substitute for a, des- a dessert wine. Yeah. Yeah. This is really good. This is really good. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Can't, can't wait to, uh, taste it chilled. Huh? Huh? Who knew? <clears throat> I think you did, but it's delicious. This is true. Well, thank you. Thank you, Brian and Vanessa. It was yes, a nice gift. Yes, thank you very much. This is outstanding. Actually, you know, thank you to the team at work, too, for the really great gifts. As I also switch back to my bamboo, and I read my world's rummiest boss note. <laughs> world's rummiest boss. That's outstanding. I sent a message because I've just recently kind of been put in with this team. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they're all great. We just hired a new person who you know. Um, 
Yeah. Again, it's one of those, I don't mention names until we know the names want to be mentioned. But, but T- um, TEA friend. Yeah, TEA friend. And, um, you know, but it, it's great because outside of the, you know, it feels good to get a gift. It feels even better when you get something that is clearly, there's some thought into it and people that, you know, like really put some effort into it. And it's not about the gift. It's about that knowing and telling yeah. that they put some thought into it. So that's pretty badass. Yeah, I was, um, ironically enough, you weren't there, but uh, your your current <laughs> office is fairly close to a large Central Florida project I'm working on. Yeah. And I had uh, I had some downtime between on-site meetings, so I reached out to Dan. I'm like, hey, can I just like hang out at your office and work for the middle of the day? So I was hanging out with your team for a little bit, and they're like, hey, what do you think about this? I'm like, hey, Greg would love that. Yes, do that. Oh, so you had some input. A little bit, yeah. Well, was it input or was it approval? It was um truthfully it was more just it was it was more approval and validation on uh, like they already they asked for some specific things that I gave them that they apparently did not act on. But um yeah, every yeah, they uh they're like, What do you what do you think about this? I'm like, That's a great that's a great idea. That'll totally work. Awesome. <clears throat> well, um, I know, speaking of other things, like you had got me fairly recently many albums. You got me those mm. those Martin Denny albums, and then you oh, got yeah. me the Rush 2112 live double album. Um, one of the things that I'm doing for the new office is um, um, I've, I've got plans to pick up a record player possibly this weekend. I might be picking up a record player really? to put into the office, and I was telling the team about it, and they're like, Oh, that'd be so awesome to be able to play some music on like vinyl. Like, like real music, yeah. yeah. The thing that I like about vinyl over just music in general is the vinyl's a process. You yeah. know, you, you, you remove the album from the sleeve, you pick the side of the album you want, you put the album on the table, you move the needle, you hit the thing, you do this stuff. Like there's there's a process involved versus I want to hear this, double click, and then you get to listen to it. Well, at the same time, I don't think it's all that. I think it's also, you know, as, you know, we live in this high fidelity world where everything's perfect and everything else, but I think there's something to be said for going back and you're listening to analog. Mm-hmm. You are like, this is a needle picking up vibrations in a groove. and You get the crackles. You uh, get yeah. The, yeah. <clears throat> and, Absolutely. You know, in college, I took an audio engineering class. Mm-hmm. As one of my colleagues, and it's like I remember learning. There is a, a intentional process in recording of slamming, where you you overdrive a recorded sound onto a tape, onto an analog tape or the magnetic tape, whatever. But it's like mm-hmm. you're, you, you know, you you it's overdrive still, that. Still analog, but yeah, yeah. But that process of slamming and affecting the recording process in that way, and those are tricks that. You know, you can recreate digitally, but it's just not the same. No, it's no, not no. the same. And 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 you go back and you think about <clears throat> like the Beatles, where the Beatles were doing crazy stuff, where they were like playing back sounds in a speaker, out of a speaker that's playing down a cinder block hallway with another microphone on the other end to get a the, very specific reverb sound. The engineering on on specifically Sergeant Pepper. Yeah was so phenomenal and I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's ahead of, ahead of its time because they they weren't doing anything technically amazing they were just organizing existing shit in such a way like the hallway phenomenon yeah you know and and, and I'm comparing this to um, like Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon engineered by Alan Parsons of the Alan Parsons project. I didn't know that he engineered that. He was the engineer for it. And I was that two w- years old. Which is why Dark Side of the Moon is the first quadraphonic um, album. The whole thing was recorded in quadraphonic sound, quadraphonic stuff. Yeah. You know, when, you know, there's, there's a scene where an airplane comes overhead. And when you listen to the, the record album, airplane goes left to right. No, no, no. Airplane is right right rear to left front like yeah. it's 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 actually cr- it's crossing over your your audio plane um 
so yeah, there, there's that was one of the one of the first when DVD A's came out, and I don't think DVD A's still exist, but you can get a a five point one DVD disc of Dark Side that is the way it was originally engineered. That's back, awesome. Back back in the day. So 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 yeah. So where I was going with that? That is technologically amazing. There was technology developed specifically for that. Sergeant Pepper, technologically not so much, but they did innovative things well, and here's to, achieve, thing. to achieve sound that you hadn't heard. Now, this is one of those, it is said and whatever, and I, I, I haven't actually done the research on it, but my understanding is that Brian Wilson from the, from yeah. the Beach Boys kind of drove himself insane trying to figure it out. Trying to reverse engineer it. Listening yeah, no, and I, listening and listening, trying to figure out what they, what, how the Beatles did what they did on Sgt. Yeah. Pepper. Yeah, oh, exactly. How the hell did you do that? Oh, we were just... Screaming into a milk crate down a hallway. Yeah. And, yeah. No, I, no, I, yeah, I've, I've heard, I've heard that same thing. Yeah. And yeah, they're doing shit like hanging a microphone from the ceiling and swinging it around between the four of them while they all sang. Yeah. Just to like this weird Doppler modulation in mm-hmm. the harmonies. And it's just physical things that they were doing with yeah. stuff they had available to them. And mm-hmm. just random weird. It's a great album. That was an absolute great album. Oh, solid. Very solid. Also, would you like to hear Garrick's unpopular music opinion for the day? Sure. Okay. Here's one for you. Paul McCartney is the only former Beatle to produce decent music post-Beatles. Okay. I disagree. That's fine. You can disagree. I, I, he I, certainly I, produced I, the best of it. I said it's unpopular. I just... Every now and then you hear a George Harrison song and you're like... The fuck is this? Like, how how many times can you say the word Harry Christian in a goddamn song and have it still be good? Like, just, eh. eh. And then even John Lennon stuff is a little whiny. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big John Lennon fan, but I really dig George Harrison. I'm having more limoncello. Motherfucker. <laughs> if you're going to pour some more, you might as well pour me some. Yeah. Here at the 57 minute mark. <laughs> hey, you know, without that, it's a doing re-re- breaks, we're going to re refill with the thing. Without doing breaks, um, we, you know what? These cute goblets are too fucking small. That's the problem. Well, your face is too small. Never heard that before. Uh, neither did I. <clears throat> ah, you were saying? No, it's just not doing these breaks. Yeah. Um, like, we completely like tra- lost track of time. It's. We're 57 minutes in, and because normally we're like, oh, we're on the, the third or fourth, whatever, however we break it down. We There's know, a third half of our show. We we know that we're like, we're nearing the end. We should be prepared to wrap up, and here we are. Like, oh, oh, fuck, that's now? Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to. We missed we, an episode. We, we, we did just, miss a week. This is going to be a two-hour episode. Hmm. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> if we did that, would we do this like 8.2 and just actually break it up or just just do a long episode? We could do it. We could do something stupid like where we uh, we just end this episode mid sent. <laughs> <laughs> I think we had. I think we'd done that. I remember on the other podcast we did that one with the uh, we had the song that we interrupted with a gunshot, and then Samuel L. Jackson. I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? Well, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? And then you and I started talking like we didn't even acknowledge what we just did. That was just one of the breaks, yeah. Yeah. Classic. Uh, classic. There's a lot of things we just set up and did and we don't do anymore. The did PSAs. I, did, I, did I tell you I've been listening to uh, uh, Two Chicks Talking Flicks? Yeah. Did I, did I tell you about about the, the, the first episode I listened to on that? Forgive me if I told you about this already. You might have. I think you talked about it on air. You talked about that you were listening. But... I, I did. So I, there was... There was the, the one episode and it it came up again in my I was I was working in the garage and I just had phone on in the background playing podcasts and and it came up on that episode again um there's an episode and it was the first one I started listening to and they just they sounded fake and disingenuous and everything was forced on this movie they were reviewing and I'm like oh, I don't know I'm not really kind of feeling it and then some quantity of time into the episode, they're like, "Yeah, we're just we're just making it up. This movie sucked. We can't <laughs> we we can't fake it anymore. This was horrible." I'm wow! Like, I'm like, "Yeah, nailed it." That's funny. Ugh. Have you tagged them or any of the stuff? That no, I, I probably should. I've been really busy. 
Yeah, we both. Have. I, I know it takes next to no effort to tag something, but you got to type it out, and then you got to proofread it, and yeah, uh, yeah. And then you got to look it up to make sure that you're tagging the right entity in the thing. Cause... I wonder if we could get an intern. We could, ooh, an unpaid intern. Ah, that would be that would be kind of amazing. Yeah. They could just handle like I have real interns, but they're like engineering students no. working towards degrees. We did an intern where we're like, okay, you need to find us our opening number to credit op- pre scene or pre credit thing for you know the next you're twenty the, episodes. You're the first employee of Cray America. <laughs> Cray America. Cray America. Yeah, it was Seinfeld. It was Kramer. Mm. Remember when when he he hired an unpaid intern. To follow him around yeah. and just he just had an intern. Which was different than Vandalay Industries. Completely different than Vandalay Industries. Yeah. As one does. Hmm. Uh, That's good stuff. It really it needs a bigger cup. I, I enjoy your really cute flutes, but it I gotta drink a mug of this shit. This is really good. Well we gotta save some for Sandy. She's gotta have some too. I, I, yeah, I <laughs> I just realized I, I spilled limoncello all over this bike. Yeah, you also have all over your shirt. I know, I did. It's it's my Rub and Nerdy, the, the podcast shirt. Did I tell you I want to get a t-shirt printer? You did. They're like 2500 bucks. I don't want any part of that. That yeah. sounds expensive. Yeah, but they're great because you just put a t-shirt on the little thing and you clip it in and you just print, die sub print any <sighs> t-shirt ever. How many colors? It's full, like... RGB? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like machine safe? It's not going to just come off? It's dice It's dice sub printing. Yeah, it's like... Huh. It's not an iron-on. It doesn't... It's not like, hey, we're going to set this stuff on the surface. We could make like retro vintage shirts. Like we could put our podcast logos on shirts. Yeah. I take it back. I'm totally for you spending $25 on that. You know what would be even better is if we got a rum company to buy us one. We need a sponsor so bad. Oh, yeah, we do. I don't know. I know we have had a guest on our show before mm-hmm. that works for a company, and he had talked about sponsoring <laughs> us. You remember that particular person? A a a, a swag oriented. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Would be. and we're like, yeah, you're never going to get this approved, and he never brought it up again. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the things you you say when you're on a microphone drinking, <laughs> the things you can. Comp- <sighs> it happens. Whatever. Oh, we do need to get him back though. Um, Hell yeah! And uh, see if he can talk about things at at places and stuff that happened. Because oh, the thing we talked about last week. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. Hmm. I think that's good. We're not going to name the human, but the human that we're talking about knows about the stuff, and we need to have him back. And yeah, well, we'll work on it. Yeah. So anyway, listen, it's getting late. Uh, you have. Um family to get home to i do we got to get this post family to get home to time. work to do i have a i'm just really busy yeah i think i've got a thing i got to do as well for work but anyway listen thank you everybody for listening we love you um big thank you to our friend dave martin demo dave pro dot com check him out don't forget to check out our website rum and nerdy dot com that's rum a and d nerdy dot com social media also at rum and nerdy a and d and um yeah and then all the stuff i don't think we've got anything else to plug yeah Yeah. not really yeah nothing else to plug this lemon shell is amazing awesome cool thanks stay nerdy my friends my sweet lord Mm, my lord Mm, my lord i really want to see
Yeah. Mmm. We used to do eight balls. Oh, those were fun, weren't they? Nothing like getting a bunch of coke, right? That was usually, like, eight balls was usually like four guys on a Friday night. One guy at eight o'clock would go, hey, man, let's get an eight ball. It lasts us all weekend. Four hours later, the same four guys. Let's get another eight ball. And he's like, let's get another one. Yeah.